So, Lucifer was an Aiki, which was a teenage Anunnaki on Mars. His real name wasn't Lucifer. And he set an uprising because he wanted a wife, just like um, Marduk had, or was about to have on Earth. So, he wanted to come down, and he said to the others, I'm going, if you don't want to come, I will still go, and I'll still take myself a wife. So, 200 of the 300 Aiki ended up behind him, saying, OK, yes, we'll come. So they used the ruse of going to the wedding to plan to steal and kidnap uh, human women and have them for themselves. Now, looking at the wings there, just remember that the Anunnaki actually gave wings out as an achievement and also a eagle helmet. So if you did something fantastic, excellent work, you get uh, actual wings. And I'm guessing they were some sort of wings like this. Uh, for the depiction because the helmet was an actual real helmet that went over the head. The Aegi were allowed to actually have wives so they chose the offspring of the Adam and Eve that was in Mesopotamia type ones not the ones that were genetically created in other words the more superior ones and as they took their wives they decided to make settlement on earth in different locations with these wives but when news came that there was going to be a flood, the Aegi decided, uh, as well as many of the others, to stay on Earth because they weren't allowed to take the women back to Nibiru, so they chose to stay on Earth. And there weren't enough spacecraft, so they moved to locations at the top of mountains, etc., ready for the oncoming flood. So what happens then is, I'll tell you in the next video, so it was the time now that the Anunnaki had to leave Earth in their ships. The ones that didn't leave Earth, uh, such as the Aegi with the wives, uh, they went to the tops of mountains, such as Ararat, for example, Mount Ararat. And the tsunami was caused by an ice shelf that the uh, Anunnaki were fully aware was going to happen. And an ice shelf broke off and actually slid in to the ocean, massive which caused a tsunami that's actually the flood the tsunami was described in the ancient texts as as high as the sky and it covered everything it covered africa covered um iraq iran which is why we can't find and every time we have to look for stuff we have to bury dig in so the gold mines were totally wiped out which explains why uh, gold miners today in africa south africa Af actually came across digging through underground uh, another tunnel which was already an ancient tunnel as the tsunami in the biblical times created this huge flood the Anunnaki were up in their ships looking down and some of them were weeping actually because it was very sad that obviously they'd spent <laughs> hundreds of thousands of years with humans and they got to like them um, and they could see you know that the planet was now becoming covered in water because of the well, as I mentioned in the last video. But Noah was in this sealed tight uh, container. It wasn't really uh, a ship. It was absolutely sealed tight. It had a little hatch. And uh, along with him was the, the domesticated animals. Noah's name wasn't Noah, by the way. It was a different name. Um, and he also had uh, some his wife and some friends um, of his. And he also had a pilot ship pilot that en Enki gave him and that ship pilot also carried a box and in that box was the essence of animals and plant seeds etc just in case they needed to repopulate the planet so it all makes sense when the Anunnaki finally landed on what little land there was left after the great flood they assessed the situation they could see that all their spaceports and buildings are totally submerged now under mud there was only one um, landing pad left that wasn't destroyed and we can see this um, type of thing that happens. What happens is they have the ancient Anunnaki buildings and then different civilizations after them build upon them. So, for example, this one here, this supposedly was one of the landing pads, the original landing pads. But as um, the Anunnaki were no longer there, this is uh, built up using... Um, different materials and different building styles and the same goes for this this supposedly was also another base but over time Romans or whoever came along and added extra th features to it so they've used the existing Anunnaki uh, architecture 
I'll let you work this one out. But on uh, Nibiru, King Anu has a group of advisors. He also has savants. Now, I'm wondering whether those savants have the uh, foresight of seeing the future. Now, I've already mentioned a few videos before that s some of the people ha in the story that's going along is that they do actually have the ability. Now, there's another one coming up that I haven't mentioned yet. Um which involves Marduk and him possibly setting up a plan to kill someone and this person um, has a fortuitous dream and sees what's going to happen. So is uh, Savant, I know that's the description that's been translated, but are they actually clairvoyants in some way or f fortune tellers? So that makes uh, an interesting thing to think that if they've got that ability, why haven't we have we been dumbed down fluoride in water etc insert your own uh, genetically modified uh, thoughts on that i should have said that before the flood king anu sent an emissary down with a tablet that was sealed had a seal on it so i'm guessing that's where we get our sort of wax seals idea from Anyway, he gave it to Enlil on Earth. Enlil opened it and immediately summoned um, Enki and Nimna. Nimna, who was actually called Ninsharag. Yes, they changed their names. So uh, the brother and sister, all three of them were there. And the tablet read out that there's going to be an impending flood because of Nibiru. So the guy, the emissary, said to the Nimna, um, Oh, we went to school together. And she said, No, I'm old. You're young. And he said, yes, that's because your Earth cycles, when you come back to Nibiru, not only will you pretty much die straight away, you will also have problems with the atmosphere, which is four times, and it drags anyone, that an Anarchies that's already gone back there, and it causes them health problems, and they die. You ain't going to believe what happened to Nibiru when it came round, when the Great Flood happened, which was the nearest it had been for millennia. That also had a problem, Nibiru, with the gold that they'd been sprinkling in the atmosphere got nudged out of the way or dis got disrupted somewhere or other, and now they're back in the same problem. But now also, on Earth, where the mines were, were flooded over with mud, so they couldn't now use them. Plus, they haven't got the humans, because they just allowed them to be wiped out. So they had a problem, the Anunnaki on Earth. Um... But that sounds stupid, doesn't it, sprinkling stuff in the atmospheres? But this nice man here, we love him. Um, he's actually trying to uh, block, block out some of the sun using chalk dust. And, and this guy here, he's a very clever man. hes um, I know he founded the Population Centre back in 1998 with Melinda. Um, and I think he's also helps fund Pfizer. So he's really looking after us. So um, whatever he's doing with, with our son, I'm sure he's doing it for the right reasons. Um, I the Anunnaki were in a really hopeless position now. Their home planet is now dwindling the atmosphere again. Earth is pretty much flooded and less people to help them and they're now aging and they can't get to the mo gold mines that they were already digging. That was it. Their life is pretty much over. However, they decided to go and look for gold using their craft and they've got this device on there that could search for gold, sort of a scanning device. We know that because they mentioned that first in when Alalula arrived and he found gold. So they went looking and they came across this mountain that half of it had been literally obliterated because of the uh, flood or the tsunami and lo and behold there were gold nuggets large gold nuggets which means they didn't need to actually have to refine or take them out of ore so it's a double-edged sword now they've got the gold um but and it's a lot easier to, to mine because it's literally falling out of this mountain Mount Ararat was actually mentioned in the Lost Book of Enki as the navel of Earth, and that's because they restarted to um, have a landing location there because the other ones were flooded or covered in mud. But they needed another couple of Twin Peaks in order for it to work for this sort of location from above to be able to be seen and for the um, pilots to land somewhere that's not waterlogged because obviously now the Anunnaki were flying backwards and forwards but now obviously a lot of area is now flooded so they needed somewhere that in some way of having a landing strip that they could help with the um, ships coming down now they looked around and the only place that at the time that wasn't flooded was a great desert area now anyone got any ideas where that could be and they decided to build their own Twin Peaks in that area. This is the actual fact of why the Great Pyramids were built. This is from the 
tablet 10 that is stone tablet that was written possibly hundreds of thousands of years ago if not 10,000 years ago um, way before the Bible so enjoy it and you'll find out exactly why these pyramids were built in exactly the place they were built in enjoy on then the southern delimit he anchored where the second set of peaks was required mountains there were none only a flat land above the water clogged valley from the ground protruded artificial peaks thereon we can raise so did Ningazita to the leaders say on a tablet the image of the smooth sided skyward rising peaks for them he drew if it can be done let it so be in Lil with approval said let them also as beacons serve on the flat land above the river's valleys, Mingasita a scale model built. The rising angles and four smooth sides with it he perfected. Next to it a larger peak he placed, its sides to earth's four corners he set. By the Anunnaki, with their tools of power, were its stones cut and erected. Beside it, in a precise location, the peak that was its twin he placed. With galleries and chambers for pulsating crystals he designed it. When this artful peak to the heavens rose, to place upon it the capstone the leaders were invited. Of electrum, an admixture by Gibble fashioned, was the apex stone made. The sunlight to the horizon it reflected, by night a pillar of fire it was. The power of all the crystals to the heavens in a beam it focused. When the artful works by Ningazita designed were completed and ready, the Anunnaki leaders the great twin peak entered. At what they saw, they marveled. Ecker, house which, like a mountain, is, they named it, a beacon to the heavens it was. That the Anunnaki the deluge survived and prevailed forever, it proclaimed. Now the new place of the celestial chariots, gold from across the seas, can receive. From it, the chariots to Nibiru, the gold for survival, shall carry. From it, to the east, where the sun on the designated day rises, they will ascend. To it, to the southwest, where the sun on the designated day sets, they will descend. Then, in Lil, by his own hand, the Nibiru crystals activated. Inside, eerie lights began to flicker. An enchanting hum, the stillness broke. Outside the capstone, all at once was shining, brighter than the sun it was. The multitude of assembled Anunnaki, a cry of joy uttered. Minma, by the occasion moved, a poem recited and sang. House that is like a mountain, house with a pointed peak, for heaven earth it is equipped, the handiwork of the Anunnaki it is. House bright and dark, house of heaven and earth. In the last video you heard how stone tablets were translated and told that the Anunnaki built the pyramids uh, without little people there helping. So let's have a look what they actually said. So they talked about um, it being four sides and smooth. Now technically there is uh, eight sides to the pyramids, but I mean, are they actually going to sit and write? No, uh, well, technically there's eight, but you can only see it two times a year. Probably not. Um, they also talked about a light beam coming from the top, and energy is actually prevalent. This is Sky News website here, um, with many scientists agreeing that uh, there is an energy source going to the top of the pyramid, so that makes sense again. And also the text says that uh, he point, they pointed the Great Pyramid to the four corners of the Earth, which when you actually break it down, it's exactly on a correct ley line pointing to the four corners of the Earth. So they were right. You are going to love this. You're going to find out when the Sphinx was built and why. And I used to think it was possibly Anubis, but it's not actually. It's a lion shape, and you are going to find out why the head is the, the head it is. So this is from the uh, Lost Book of Enki, Tablet 10. Enjoy. While the Anunnaki, their remarkable handiwork, were celebrating, Enki to Enlil, words of suggestion, said, When in future days it will be asked, When and by whom has this marvel been fashioned? Let us beside the Twin Peaks a monument create. The age of the lion let it announce. The image of Ningazita, the peak's designer, let its face be led it precisely toward the place of the celestial chariot's gaze. When, by whom, and the purpose led it to the future generations reveal. So did Inky to Enlil suggest. To the words Enlil consented, and to Inky said, Of the place of the celestial chariots, Utu must again be the commander. Let the gazing lion, 
precisely eastward facing with Ningazita's image be, when the work to cut and shape the line from the bedrock was proceeding, Marduk, to his father Inky, words of aggrievement said, To dominate the whole earth to me did you promise. Now command and glory to others are granted, without task or dominion I am left. In my erstwhile domain are the artificed mounts situated, on the lion the image mine must be. By these words of Marduk, Ningazita was angered. The other sons were also annoyed. By the clamor for domains, Ninurta and his brothers were also aroused. Lands for themselves and devoted earthlings everyone was demanding. Let not the celebration a contest become. Ninma amidst the raised voices shouted, The earth is still in havoc. We Anunnaki are few. Of the earthlings there are only survivors. Let Marduk, Ningazita of the honor not deprive. Let us Marduk's words also heed. So did Ninma, the peacemaker, to the contending leaders say. For peace to prevail, the habitable lands between us should be a part set, in Lil to Inki said. To make the peninsula an uncontested divider, they agreed. To the peacemaker Ninma, they it allotted. Till moon, land of the missiles, they named it. To earthlings, it was beyond bounds. The habitable lands to the east thereof to Enlil and his offspring were set apart. For the descendants of two sons of Sasudra, Shem and Yafet, therein to dwell. The dark-hued landmass that the Abzu included to Inki and his clan was for domains granted. So there you go, you heard it here first. So it was built just after the Twin Peaks, well they call them the Twin Peaks, but the pyramids. Which is fascinating, isn't it? There you go, you've learnt something. So it's at this time that the Anunnaki say that they're going to put their tablets, their secret tablets and sacred tablets, such as Tablets of Destiny, in the Hall of Records. Now, the only two buildings um, or buildings that they built at the time, which is after the flood, was the Sphinx and the Pyramids. Now, there's a lot of people saying that uh, under the, the right paw of the Sphinx, is the Hall of Records. So that would kind of make sense, seeing as the Anunnaki did say that they was going to put uh, their tablets in the Hall of Records and the only buildings were the Sphinx and Pyramids. But also, um, Ed Casey said that it was uh, the Hall of Records was there. And leaked footage, now supposedly, this is from within the Sphinx itself, shows um, a locked up uh, secret passageway. Now, if there was a Hall of Records, the American government, trust me, have already been there, got that and done that and taken it. I'm going to tell you why I think we don't have free will. And that's because, for example, back in the 80s, I spoke to clairvoyants, mediums, um, and heard remote viewers talk about the future, and the near future. And the near future included uh, camps where people will be put in which is kind of similar to what's happening now and then they said that after that there'll be a less population and uh, an AI future in other words uh, artificial intelligence will be controlling your life <clears throat> and now when you add the social score and etc now these are people back in the 80s that's telling the future now obviously there's other people out there that can predict the future so the future's already happened, and now I know people could say, oh, but that's one possible future, but no, if, how can you say there's one possible future if there's loads? You can't just pick one, that means that one has happened, which means we've already done this before, and your free will was once, but not now, this is already... Following on my, from my last video about free will and why we don't have it, anyone that's done a Ouija board or spoke to a clairvoyant or a medium know that spirits are real, and spirits are basically us when we die. Now... If I was to die in 1940s in Germany in a prison, I have to be careful what I say, um, I would take the other people that's also died at the same time, these spirits, and I would fly off and go and attack the man with the moustache, and I would take him out, whatever it took, to stop that happening. Now, that never happened. So he obviously carried on which means spirits don't have the free will to go and take out such people now we know poltergeists can actually physically harm people and bruise them we know uh ghosts can float, throw things through the air and push people so why can't a hundred thousand dead people because of one person go and push that dead person just like the elites now why 
Hey, why not find out your true history, and I mean proper history, not the stuff you're being taught at school or colleges even. Um, look, there's people here saying, my OCD is making me start here, new follower. Uh, I'm here from part 197 and enjoying your teachers tremendously. Love these videos, always have, always will. So these videos I produce actually from 30 years of research and I cover everything from pyramids, how they were built, properly how they were built, not <laughs> what we're told, um, deja vu, time travel, giants, um, gods, really, anarchy, yes, um, dinosaurs that actually coexisted with man, as you can see there. Um, everything is pretty much covered in a chronological order, so try and watch them from video one onwards. And if you want to watch them in blocks, go to YouTube, Our True History, and look for them in blocks of 50, for example. You ain't going to believe this about the pyramids, but it was written in ancient stone tablets, so you kind of have to, really. Um, so, Dumuzi was son of Enki, not the Enki, there's the, the real Enki up here, but another Enki further down. Now, Dumuzi was um, married to Nanana, and they were due to get land, lots of land and properties, etc., that was built by the Anunnaki. But Murdoch, who was the direct son of Enki, wasn't going to get the same land, and he was really upset. So one night, Dumuzi actually had a premonition of seven people being sent by Murdoch to come and kill him. So he decided, he told Anana, and he decided to leave the house that they were living in, and he went to a waterfall. And please watch the next video because I'll tell you what happens after that. It is fascinating. Following on from my last video about what really happened to the pyramids, uh, so Dumuzi went and into hiding and was going to hide behind a waterfall. However, as he was climbing, he slipped and fell, and his lifeless body ended up washed on the shore. So when his betrothed uh, found out, she went mental, and this is probably where we get a woman scorned, and she wanted Murdoch to die, but obviously Murdoch didn't actually do um anything although he did sort of plan it he didn't actually kill him this time so there was a huge battle between enlil's and the anunnaki's and murdoch and enki trying to stop the fights and this is where they actually first used humans to actually wield weapons um finally what happened was murdoch um went into hiding because there was a huge battles between inerta etc let me tell you that the rest in the next video because it's fascinating it's, it's so, following on from the last two videos about what actually really happens to the pyramids. So, Murdoch went in hiding and he eventually ended up hiding in the Great Pyramid, which was actually probably a clever idea. But uh, Anana, who is the wife of Dumuzi, was uh, really, really upset and she managed to find out that he was there. So she got Ninurta, which is Enlil's son, to come and help and many of the Anunnaki's uh, went inside the, the chamber, went inside the Great Pyramid. Now there's crystals in there, which is what they use to uh, power the device. And Murdoch was crushing them as he was climbing higher and higher. He ended up pulling down the blocks. I don't know if you know much about pyramids, but there is actual what they call uh, lock stones that come down and he pulled those to stop the advance in Anunnaki trying to get him and it got to the point that he got following on from the last three videos you have to watch them in order this is fascinating uh, so Murdoch is now hidden up way up in the king's chamber uh, even above that which is where they found the fake graffiti but that's another story um, so he was crushing all these crystals etc and Outside, eventually, um, Enki and Enlil agreed that they would let Murdoch live, and but not give him any land and exile him. So they ended up having to get Ninurta to try and work out how to get into uh, the Great Pyramid. So what they'd done was they cut... Um, up here they cut a passageway and then had to get another passageway and another passageway and finally got to um, Murdoch. They brought him out and he was unconscious they managed to, to to revive him and they said to him you've not got any land but we're going to let you live and he said no i would rather die and i'll tell you what happens in the next murduk finally agreed that he could be banished and still live 
However, that's not the end of uh, Murdoch, Murdoch. Um, he becomes Ra later on, but that, I'll, I'll cover that when we get there. So, what happened next was Anana wanted the pyramid that was created to, to, as a beacon to be destroyed. She said it uh, reminds her of her loved one. So, um, Ninurta went in his craft and shot the capstone off because they couldn't actually shoot through the, the, the pyramid itself. So, obviously, their technology um, without totally destroying it. So, they shot the capstone off and they collected the remaining unbroken crystals and set up another beacon somewhere else. Um, now, they do describe what these locations, but obviously, it's very difficult to know where they are because they're different names. God is real, according to possibly tablet 12 or 13 of the ancient texts, where he talks to um, the Anunnaki Enlil, Enki, and Ninshrag, the sister. And he said, he, he well, he was called Galzu, uh, and he came over apparently from Nibiru and explained to the three of them that there's going to be a flood. Um, and that they can't go back to Nibiru because of their age now they will die now he had white hair and was look young looking and the sister said um, she recognised him and he went to school with her but obviously she's now aged because she's on earth anyway cut to um, after the flood you are going to love this um, Anzu came down now obviously Galzu left Anzu came down, he's the king, and I'll tell you... Following on from the last video where I said God spoke to the Anunnaki. So, after the flood, um, Anu came down from Nibiru, this was his last trip, and he spoke to the three um, siblings, Enki, Enlil, and Ninshag, and th they thanked him for sending the emissary, Galzu, and he said, what emissary? Uh, and they said the one that came down and told us we can't go back to Nibiru because we will die because of the age and the one that warned us about the flood Anu said, King Anu said I never sent anyone, I didn't know anything about this we do know that you will age but um, we didn't know anything about sending any em emissary so they all concluded that it was possibly and this is their words, the creator of everything trying to warn them and to let them keep humans alive which is very interesting next time you think you're having a bad day or year just remember the Anunnaki lived for hundreds of thousands of years and were mining in South Africa imagine doing that for hundreds of thousands of years I had someone call me stupid um, along with some other bad words but uh, the point that they was trying to get at is I keep talking about the cuneiform tablets uh, specifically the, the Lost Book of Enki at the moment and there's 1 to 14 of those and the amount of information I'm giving out would, as he said, require the tablets to be a mile high now although he hadn't watched any other videos or anything else he did actually have a point um, so I thought I'd better just address that. So the actual word isn't tablet in Sumerian. Now the people that translated it, because we call these, as you know, when we first found these, we said these were tablets. So obviously the people that's translated it don't actually know what that other word is. So they put the word tablet. So when in the ancient text it says they went away and wrote the information down on A or in A, whatever it was obviously the people translating it are holding what we now call a tablet so they, they transcribed the word as tablet or translated it which makes sense now going to uh going back in our past if i said to you or, or a caveman um here's a tablet and here's a book both have writing on um, now the caveman would assume one tablet one book now a book as we know has many pages so the same goes for the cuneiform tablets just because they're not bound and attached to each other doesn't make it not a book if that makes sense so in other words um, tablet one isn't yes yeah, because again it's our language we call it tablet isn't one 
cuneiform tablet on its own. It's a series of tablets that create whatever their language was. In other words, it's really, it's a book. But you can't, in um, transcribing it, you can't say books, the lost, um, you know, like tablets one. So basically, I hope that, that sort of makes sense. So basically, there's more than one tablet that makes one tablet, but that's because of our language. I hope that makes sense. You may not know why the first king was ever appointed well it's to do with king anu from nibiru coming down to earth and this was after the flood and they spoke he spoke to his children who told him about gaozu who they ended up believing to be the creator of everything and because of that interaction they had prior to the flood they believed that the creator of everything wanted humans to inherit the earth so with that king anu said okay we will teach humans what we know so they taught this law um, math linen farming everything that you can possibly think of and yes it we we'll, we we can work out that it did actually come from samaria and king anu appointed a human to be a king and he actually gave him a crown and scepter that's where we get the crown and scepter from but there is trouble ahead big trouble so keep it's at this point in history after the flood when king anu came down to earth is where i believe just from the research that the uh gods on the anunnaki main people were actually in greece in mount olympus um now they had meetings there and they ended up discussing the territories that should be given out to the anunnaki to help the humans take over earth or inherit earth now they come up with the idea that Enki should have some land, Enlil should have some land, and when I'm on about land, I'm on about territory, massive territories, pretty much countries, um, or if not whole continents. Um, and the Anunnaki should have their own land, but Ayana, yes, she is to get her own territory. And that, wait for the war, just come in keep watching oh ayana got her own land after all but the problem started when the king anu decided to go and visit enki's firstborn who was banished now at this point in history um murduk the firstborn son was playing around at being ra and trying to discount all the other gods because he was obviously angry prior to even knowing about uh, Ayana getting land so anyway King Anu finally met up with Murduk and actually pardoned him yes if you remember he was banished um, and not to get any land but he was um, pardoned by King Anu who said look you've gone for enough you are now you know fine again but when <laughs> Murduk found out that Ayana as well as other the four, three others that got land but Ayana should not have got land he should have got land and rightly so to be fair so guess what's coming next coming up in my future videos I'll be able to tell you that the Minotaur was actually real and what he was guarding I'll also be able to tell you that this helicopter is actually a helicopter and this is a carving in Abydos that uh, in Egypt that looks like spaceships as well and I will be able to tell you who they belong to and it wasn't to do with time travel Tower of Babel was real. I can tell you who was building it and why and what actually happened to it. And it's, again, slightly different from what the Bible says because the Bible, as we know, is a copy of the ancient text that I'm talking about. Atlantis, I can, with some degree of uh, certainty, tell you that who was the Atlanteans and what actually happened to Atlantis. And we'll go through some things where the Bible, unfortunately, gets things wrong, where they talk here about rot, uh, rotting flesh and uh, things like that, that actually they say is a plague, but when you watch my videos, you'll realise it wasn't. So follow and subscribe. Ayana, also called Ishtar and possibly Aphrodite, um, was absolutely stunning. Not my type, I'm not into eight-foot women, but she was stunning and when king anu had came down his sons and daughter had built him a magnificent building uh seven stories high in eridu 
and he met Ayana and was smitten with her um not in that way but maybe possibly and he when he left to go back to Nibiru he actually gave his tower to Ayana now later on Ayana wanted the ME um possibly tablets which is the information on how to create humans and various other mythological creatures and what she done was she tricked Enki because he was the only one that had them so she went to his um place and I'll tell you what happens in the next video these are carvings of Ayana but in different locations where she's called different names Ishtar etc um as you can see there but what she done was she went to Enki's location is is building and she deliberately wore a thin vowed dress now bear in mind she's stunning apparently and she took some wine with her etc and over the, a long period she managed to get enki very very drunk and she asked seven times for these me we're not sure if they're tablets or not but she asked seven times for them and eventually he gave them to her and then he fell into a drunken stupor and fell asleep and she whizzed off as quick as she could with these me's uh which i've mentioned in the last video what they are and when he awoke he realized what had happened and you'll find out what happens in the next video sorry i keep doing these cliffhangers but I there's an actual carving of ayana and Demuzi who fell off of a ledge in a waterfall. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know what I'm on about. So Ayana uh, was summoned back to Enki's location uh, building because he obviously found out that she took the ME tablets. So she came back, but she had given her maid uh, the tablets, or whatever they are, the ME's, um, in the building that Anu had gave her so that's where they were and uh, Ayana came all the way back to Enki's place um, literally under arrest almost type of thing and uh, Enlil got involved so Enlil came over and said what's going on and she said that Enki actually gave her the tablets and Enki was like well yeah I did Duh. and I'm running out of time but yeah you know what's the next one Enlil said to Ayana, when the time of Kishi comes, you can have the M.E.s. Now, when Murduk found out about this, he flipped and was saying that his father is being dishonoured and his father's been humiliated and that he also wants uh, some land in Edin, which we know in the Bibles, unfortunately, says Eden. But Enlil dismissed Murduk saying, yeah, you're not going to get any land. And now that really annoyed Murduk because this Ayana is really getting, taking the biscuit here. So what he done is he gathered up the Aegi. Now, bearing in mind, he was in charge of them when they were on the Mars, on the away station. And so he's got some followers there. And he gathered their offspring and humans. And he went to make a sacred place and you'll never guess what that was in the sacred land that Marduk had chosen he started to build a tower as tall as the sky and the design was for sky ships now we're not sure whether the sky ships are ships that fly around in, in the in the sky or whether they were rockets designed to aim at for example Ayana um, he had to teach the uh, humans how to burn and use fire to create stone to build this uh, tower. Now, when Enlil found out, he came out uh, and spoke to Murduk and said, you know, look, you know, stop this. But Murduk said no. So Enlil went away and gathered huge forces to come back and attack this very tall tower, which we all know as the Tower of Babel. And I'll explain in the next video about the languages. So yes, Bible had it slightly right, but not 100 percent so the tower of babel was near completion when enlil and his army came in their sky ships and literally blasted the thing to pieces and they couldn't allow humans to have that sort of power with uh, spaceships or starships or rockets and they couldn't allow murduk to um, have a launch pad so he could go off and try and attack Ayana. Not saying that that's what they thought, but that's where, <laughs> where I would be going with it. 
Um, so they totally destroyed it, and Enlil was upset the fact that uh, you know Murduk had managed to get various clans, you know, Aegis, humans, etc. So he said, you know, they all speak one language. Um, I will change this. So over a period of time, he taught them different languages and forced them to learn different languages so that they didn't uh, wasn't able to communicate with other factions. And that is the Tower of Babel. Marduk went back to the land that he had before he was banished. And his brother, Ningazida, was uh, in charge there now. And before Marduk went away, he said to him, uh, Ningazida, look, you know, do this, do that, do this, do that. But when he finally turned back, uh, to arrived, bearing in mind it was probably a couple of thousand years later, um, Ningazida hadn't done pretty much anything that his brother had told him to do. So Ningazida was told to bug off. And Ningazida said, no, I'm here now, it's my place. And so for 350 years, they actually squabbled um, and made the place so sort of unlivable. I mean, it was, you know, virtually any, no, as you can see here, this type of thing where no vegetation was growing and stuff. Uh, eventually, Enki, their dad, came along and said, you know, Ningazida, for peace, go away and let Murduk have this place. I've mentioned the Anunnaki and Enki's MEs. Now, I think that's to do with a blueprint for DNA. So, in other words, you can create a type of person that you actually want. Um, now, these were given out in regions uh, when they, when the territories, were, the four territories were given out to, basically, to the humans, even though the Anunnaki was still in charge. Uh, that's when they was teaching us. And some of these... Uh, MEs were given out for specific roles such as um, kings, priests, um, musicians and stuff like that and each one obviously had a different role. Now Elon Musk actually talks about DNA and RNA, uh, the stuff that people are putting in their arms at the moment, how that can, you could actually switch someone to a butterfly or a caterpillar, as I think his words were. So it's not inconceivable that the MEs were, in fact, designed for Pacific um, rulers or people in history. Is there a doctor in the house? And the reason why I'm asking is this is an elongated skull, a genuine elongated skull that has, doesn't have certain sutras that humans do. And if you look at it compared to this person here, um, I'm thinking that the skulls that we found are not as big as an eight foot Anunnaki. Um, so every time you look at these skulls, um, when people were showing them, they don't seem to be um, as big as an eight foot um, person or an anarchy so I'm just curious uh, I'm not an expert so would as a doctor would you say that that is the same you know proportions as a six foot man for example or would you say that that actually then would make an eight foot an anarchy now I'm thinking it's probably the Aegi because obviously they were young adults out or demigods these could be so uh, anyone got any ideas the creator of everything is real, according to Enlil again. He, this time he had another meeting with Gao Zhu, who could have been the messenger of the creator of everything, or the actual creator of everything himself. Now, Gao Zhu spoke to Enlil in a dream, and told Enlil of forecoming events, and such as who's going to be placed in what position of power on Earth, etc., etc. But one of the most disturbing was there was going to be a catastrophe war like no other and to me i kind of read into that that if the creator of everything gets involved in a war it's got to be a pretty bad one um now in the morning enlil woke up wasn't sure whether it was a dream or not and didn't tell anyone but as the future progressed all the things that gal Zhu had told him were coming true including the war so keep watching and I will describe the war in detail. Need your help and your brain power on this one. So the Anunnaki we know are 8 to 10 foot tall and researchers believe that the Anunnaki have this elongated skull which we know is not a human skull. It has various different features that cannot be uh, created by headboarding or by um, deformities. These are actually genuinely things that we should never have or haven't got. So basically the Anunnaki we believe had the elongated skulls however 
there's a passage in one of the tablets for the lost book of enki where it says that when they first created adam um the skin on his manhood was there compared to theirs this is where you get circumcision from um so they actually said in their tablets uh let's leave that skin so we can tell the difference between them and us which i found interesting now obviously the difference between them and us would be a massive skull uh, elongated skull so I'm of the conclusion that they possibly didn't have an elongated skull now they probably had a normal skull which makes sense with the text when they said leave the skin so we can tell the difference now we know that in history you've got people like um, this is the sister of uh, Tutankhamun the mum and dad had elongated skulls and this is proven, and even Tutankhamun had an elongated skull. So we know that the uh, Anunnaki um, created humans using MEs, which I've mentioned before in other videos, which is possibly uh, microchondrial extract. But basically they were choosing the characteristics for leaders, for pharaohs, for kings, and all sorts of things, which they do talk about. So I'm now of the opinion, and I'm wondering what your thoughts are then, that possibly the MEs, uh, the creations that's been created from the ME, which is DNA basically, um, ended up creating these elongated skulls as opposed to the Anunnaki with uh, elongated skulls. I know I'm probably the only researcher that's, that's put all this sort of together, so I'm just wondering on your thoughts on it, because it does come across that the um sort of the demigods or the kings of the area do have these elongated skulls so what's your thoughts please let me know the sphinx is a lot older than you think but not as old as some researchers say now some researchers say this is prior to the flood which would have been 10,000 years plus ago and they say this is also older than the pyramids but the problem with some of these researchers is they forget that this had the pyramids had a covering over it so any weathering would have took that off first and then started to work the weathering work on the inner stones whereas the sphinx didn't have an outer covering so the weathering attacked that first so that's why it looks older but anyway so um no it was built after the floods the ancient texts say that um which makes sense if you read the ancient text now the Great Flood was actually caused by Nibiru coming round, breaking off an ice shelf, causing tsunami. Now, Nibiru's been round twice more since, so I'm saying that there could have been a second mini flood, bearing in mind the, the Nile's not too far from it, which could have caused the weathering that they believe is old. Finally, after two regions were set up and flourishing successfully by the and uh, Enki's lot and Enlil's lot and now it was Ayana's turn and her land didn't do so well and that's because she totally neglected it she had now found a new love um, but she still craved after Dumuzi who we know passed now this new guy Banda um, she somehow proje projected that she thought he was Dumuzi anyway he died uh, Banza died but he didn't actually die he nearly died and when he was uh, came back to life uh, Ayana believed that it was her that created life and can bring back people so she, at that point she decided to call herself a goddess even though technically she wasn't and that's when the trouble started I'll tell you more in the next video have you heard of Gilgamesh or the epic of Gilgamesh well I'm going to tell you what actually happened with Gilgamesh he was an Anunnaki and I'm going to do this over the next couple of videos uh, and he's important because if it wasn't for him we wouldn't have the stone writing of these mythological creatures that are not mythological because they're actually written in stone as to what they are so his story is very important so when he became of age he said to his mum mum am i going to die because he could see all these humans dying because obviously his lineage was anarchy and therefore he lived a lot longer so he said to his mum i'm mum, gonna die like these she said well here you will if you go back to nibiru you'll be okay so his mum asked uh one of the main people there that deals with the spaceport 
can he go back to Nibiru? And she kept asking day after day after day. And I'll tell you what happened in the next video. Gilgamesh's mum finally persuaded Utu to allow Gilgamesh to go to the spaceport to go up to Nibiru to have a longer life. Now, Ninsharag, who is Enki's sister and also part of the team that created humans, uh, said for his arduous journey, she will create him a companion of some description. So in the stone tablets, it actually says that she created Enkidu, not from a womb and without blood. And Enkidu was some sort of we don't know but the pair of them then headed off on their long arduous journey to the spaceport and along the way they came across a cedar forest and in that cedar forest was a fire breathing monster as described in the ancient text now they managed to confuse it and break it to pieces which makes me think it was guarding something and it wasn't actually a creature it was probably Enki's um, technology and I'll tell you why after this video I get asked why there's 500 plus videos. They're not all the same videos to do with whatever subject you was watching at that point. I cover ancient aliens, I cover modern aliens, I cover Bigfoot, ghosts, spirits, orbs, crop circles, the list goes on. And the videos are done numbered because they're in a chronological order. So instead of you just going straight and watching a random video of mine, and it talks about aliens or it talks about something, you, you've got no context and you'll just think stupid and then you'll type stupid uh, messages on my videos. But if you go back and watch from video one onwards where I lay out how it all plays out, you're like, ah, okay, that makes total sense. So, and that's what loads and loads of people don't do. They watch it from video one onwards and they love them. So if you're interested in any of these subjects, do go back and try and watch them from video one onwards. They're also on YouTube in blocks of 50, 1 to 50, 51 to 100, etc. So it's easier to watch if you want to watch them on YouTube. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this. Fun fact for you, back when the Anunnaki were around, they actually allowed women to work in a building where men would go and frequent and pay for their company. That was allowed. You probably know I deal with aliens and crop circles and um, all sorts of things, spirits, etc. Uh, so I just thought I'd read some of these lovely comments out on just, this is on just one video that I've got on YouTube, but obviously I've got loads, but these are just the comments on one. So uh, Pamela's wrote, I'm absolutely blown away, my life's been a fabrication. Love your vids, please don't stop. And then uh, Kevin's wrote, must watch. What great videos and content. Love the way you have this all set up with double checked clues turned into facts amazing to try and piece it all together even after it's been lost and found through forgetful filters of time and corrupt governments thanks buddy great job um thanks for doing the longer videos these mean these are what that person's talking about is here i've done one to 50 of these videos um and then 51 to 100 etc so that person's obviously came from tiktok and now watches them on youtube um so i just thought i'd say thank you to all those people you probably know my videos are about our true history, not the stuff you get taught in schools because they are generally funded by big companies or corporations like the Rockefeller companies who don't want us to know. So anyway, I do my videos in an order. Uh, that's why they're all numbered. So if you watch them from video one onwards, it makes a lot more sense when you get to aliens, uh, you know, little greys, for example, and where they come into it and where spirits come into it compared to Egypt, etc. But if you just dive straight in and watch um, the Egypt video and I talk about spirits, they'll be like... Wow, that's crazy. But if you watched it in order, it makes more sense. So to watch it in order, I've pinned videos one, two, and three at the top, just to give you a flavor of what it is, because I know it takes a while to scroll all the way to the very bottom. But once you are watching them, if you like, this isn't a, an advert for me just to get likes, but if you like it, then you can go back and carry on watching it from where it was. Um, so then you can watch some more, stop, and then go, keep going back. As long as you like it, you'll know where you was watching. Over the next few videos, I'm going to say the differences between the Epic of Gilgamesh and other texts about Gilgamesh. Um, and we'll see that some translations uh, don't have it quite right and others seem to go off on a tangent. And that's just me trying to show you that I don't believe absolutely everything. I do pick holes in things where it doesn't make sense. So Gilgamesh was king of Uruk. And if you look down the family line, this is the Anunnaki's etc. family line. And down the bottom there, you've got Gilgamesh and Ninsharag's uh, line because she helped create this Enkidu, which was this creature that was from Gilgamesh's blood or, or DNA.
So the first discrepancy is Enkidu's story. Um, now I'm just running out of time here, so I will carry it on on the next video, but I will release both of these at the same time so you don't feel angry. So the first discrepancy of the Epic of Gilgamesh compared to other texts is the Epic of Gilgamesh says that Enkidu, which is a creation from Gilgamesh blood um, DNA, and basically was created as a companion for him, um, was the Enkidu was actually put when he was born in a field to live with wild animals. And if it wasn't for a series of absolute coincidences that ended up with uh, Enkidu meeting Gilgamesh through third parties etc etc there was never it was obviously never meant to happen in the epic of gilgamesh but it eventually did um and then obviously they became what they call brothers because obviously it was part of dna of him so that's the first discrepancy compared to and i'll explain in because i've just run out of time in the next video what other um documentation say and you'll see the difference so the difference between epic of gilgamesh and say the lost book of enki the lost book of enki has uh enkidu which we know was created from gilgamesh um actually with gilgamesh from the start as a companion to deliberately go on a long journey with him now the reason why i say there's a discrepancy is because ninshirag in all her wisdom wouldn't create a hybrid uh, from DNA of Gilgamesh and then go and leave it in a wilderness um, to, to live with wild animals. I mean, what is the point of that? Whereas the Lost Book of Enki says that he was uh, Enkidu was created to go with Gilgamesh, which makes more sense to me instead of having a um, b bother creating this creature and then just leaving it in the wild. It, it, that's see to me that doesn't make sense. And there's a few other discrepancies as well, so I'll go through those in the following videos. The version of the Epic of Gilgamesh says that King Gilgamesh walked through a forest and it was absolutely pitch black for seven leagues. Now a league back then was as far as you could walk in an hour, so seven hours. He continued to walk and said he could not see sunlight neither in front of him nor behind him. And eventually after the seventh league he could feel the wind on his face. Now, if you're walking through a forest, you can pretty much still feel the wind on your face. And during daylight, which is when he was walking, there is no chance you'll still get some sunlight. Now, the other version, which is Lost Book of Enki, says he was in a tunnel, a subterranean tunnel, um, and walked for seven leagues and couldn't see a thing until he got to the end and then felt the wind. Now, that would make more sense to me, the tunnel, than the Epic of Gilgamesh and in a forest. So you see there's another discrepancy there between the two. The Minotaur, was it real? Well, let's have a look. So, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, it talks about the bull of heaven being sent down from heaven, which we know is space, um, to attack Gilgamesh and Enkidu. Now, in all the stories, Enkidu actually did kill the bull and for that was punished because it was um, Enlil's bull half ball creature um and so he was enkidu was punished to death now in the lost book of enki the minotaur instead of being sent down was actually guarding a secret passageway tunnel labyrinth that belonged to uh, enlil and of course when gilgamesh and enki came uh, enkidu came along they killed the ball and that's where we get the minotaur from now obviously there's um, Greek mythology also has the Minotaur also guarding things. So you can see there's a possible. Can you tell me the most destructive cataclysmic event that ever happened on the planet Earth that is not natural? Okay, so you'll probably come out with Hiroshima maybe, which was obviously terrible, but that is dwarfed by what actually happened in our past that you probably don't even know about. In fact, the Bible, although they write about it, they didn't actually quite get it right because they didn't really know what was going on. We do. So, over the next few videos, I'm going to have to explain who was involved, what happened, and why. So, it all starts with the Sumerians, which we know really is the Anunnaki. That's where they first set up base to help humans, the, the Sumeria. That's why everyone calls them Sumerians, but they were Anunnaki. And these are the uh, ancient aliens that came down from their own planet. 
Now, watch my other videos if you start thinking I'm going a bit crazy, but this is all true, and we've got absolute records of this cataclysmic event. So keep watching as I go through the story. Aphrodite was actually a bit of a... Yeah, she would lure men uh, that's on their wedding night to go with her to spend the night with her because she promised immortality, and in the morning they were dead. But that one person that did survive, she then thought that she could bring people back and become a goddess herself because she now thinks that she's got that power. Now, she then started to go a bit crazy and wanted all the lands to herself. Now, at this time, Marduk... Uh, had set up Ra as a pseudonym in Egypt and was telling those people to start taking the other lands because he wanted them. So this is the start of the cataclysmic events due to come, and I'll tell you about those in it soon. Now, Marduk believed that he should rule the whole of Earth on his own and not have many gods like they did before. And the reason why he believed that is because it was, he believed it was coming up to the time of the Ram, as in the celestial looking up at the stars, but Enlil still had the ball. Aphrodite was also called Ishtar and Ayana. Now, when Ayana found out about Murduk trying to take over the planet, uh, she got angry and she found out that he was also rebuilding this sky tower. And when they all found out, when all the gods found out that he was re rebuilding the sky tower, they allowed Ayana to go and basically kill people which was quite unheard of really so she went uh, with her weapons and it doesn't actually describe what weapons but obviously it was bad because in the ancient stone text they talk about blood absolutely filling the rivers so she went a town um, probably with the help of her brother Utu and another brother Marduk done a runner and everything settled back down but Enlil still wanted to prove that it was his time the time of the ball so he got his son Ninurta to go around and build these round stone structures that look like yes yeah, Stonehenge. This is why we have all these stone structures around the world and they're not just in Stonehenge is because Enlil wanted the humans to learn about the star systems etc so that they could see that um, when to grow harvest etc but not just that um, that it was the time of the ball which was Enlil's time however um, Murduk had other op you know ideas because it, it was coming up to the time of the ram and that was would be his time to take over the whole planet it was at this time that Enlil had a dream about Galzu who supposedly is a messenger of the creator of everything and uh, our Galzu said to Enlil look this is what's going to happen about the catastrophe that's coming in the future and our uh, Murduk's going to be involved and blah 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 so when Enlil woke, woke, he never told anyone about his dream, which was actually due to come true. Marduk decided to have another pop at taking over the planet, and even after what Ayana had done with those humans. So he managed, uh, Marduk managed to get more humans to start following him and started taking over more lands, etc, etc. And it got to a point where he was telling them to build walls and rivers and canals, etc, so that his armies would have the infrastructure behind them to keep pushing forward now you've probably heard the uh, ancient story of Jericho now obviously Marduk wasn't always there and didn't give him any technology because he didn't really have that much technology um, however his brothers and so on the other gods etc who had humans down there fighting gave the humans this device to help bring the walls down and yes it was a sound device the same sound device that could move the blocks to make the pyramids in the first place and thus you have the walls of Jericho brought down and it was Marduk's lot that was behind the wall. Hi I'm the guy that does the Our True History videos which cover from anything from Anunnaki, Bigfoot, Spirits, Orbs and these are the sort of stuff you don't get taught in school. Um, so I was doing a live the other day and someone said to me that they was going to put my name forward to a podcast that that person listens to and they said um, they thought I would be you know good on that other person's podcast show uh so i said yeah you know more than welcome to you know put me out there if you want not a problem i just enjoy talking about these subjects so that got me thinking that there's probably other people that might would lo like me on their show to debate talk join in whatever um so if you do just put a message on any of my posts or on this post even and i will um add you as a friend and we can chat a uh, direct messaging type thing Okay, and obviously if you want to be on mine, let me know as well. I'm more than happy to have people talk about these subjects on mine. Thanks. 
Enlil called for a meeting of the gods and their children also turned up. Even Ayana was there with her brothers. And this was a meeting about Murduk, what to do about him, because he was now trying to be supreme god of the whole planet. And he'd also started to rebuild his sky tower, which we know is the Tower of Babel, but it, he was trying to rebuild that. And obviously they can't allow that because they didn't allow it the first time they, they took it down with weapons but this time they needed to really stop Murduk because he's got taken over many of the lands and the idea then was let's reuse the weapons or let's use the weapons that Alalula brought down when he first came here now if you don't know what these weapons of terror are watch my very first videos onwards and you'll find out Alalula came here uh, it was the first person, the first Anunnaki here, and on his ship he had these weapons of terror, but they didn't use them back then, uh, 400 and odd thousand years before. The weapons of terror were hidden in a cave, and after 400,000 years they actually still worked. Um, now Enki didn't know that Enlil knew where they were, so um, unfortunately Enlil did, so he sent his son Ninurta and another Anunnaki to the cave mountain to te get them and get them ready. And they actually even named the seven of these weapons, and the first one was called the one without rival was the first one the blaming flame called the second one and these are important because each one of these did something different the one with terror crumbles he called the third mountain melter the fourth literally it did mount and you'll find out soon wind of the rim of the world seeks the name of the fifth the one above and below no one spares was the sixth and the seventh with the monster of venom was filled and these are important these names because the bible even talks about this just before the word was given they tried to evacuate some of these cities to stop everyone dying because they were really just trying to stop Marduk from progressing his armies and even some of the Igaigi which were young Anunnaki uh, that had technology keep that in mind for the next few videos um, they had to leave home because their home was about to be destroyed keep that in mind um, so anyway Enlil finally gave the message and off Ninurta went with another uh, Anunnaki with these seven weapons and they would drop the first weapon over a location a city that they wanted to and it totally annihilated the city and there's huge descriptions of what actually happened in the Lost Book of Enki of uh, what happens with each of these disastrous um, weapons as they take out city after city of all the weapons of terror that the Anunnaki unleashed at that time, the worst one was the last because it had radiation and it was pushing, the winds was pushing them out towards actually where the Anunnaki were staying and it would wipe out cattle, it would wipe out plants, the radiation, the descriptions in the stone tablets say basically the, the thickest wall wouldn't stop this plague shall we say um from rotting people's flesh and the tongues falling out etc it was uh, quite horrific and eventually the anunnaki worked out that the wind was blowing it their way and they called red alert basically they bugged out on their sky ships up to uh either into space or as far as way where they could now this is all written in the uh bibles of course the bible called it a plague because they had no idea what it was and bearing in mind the bible was written a copy of a copy of a copy and it was a couple of thousand years later but basically it all says about the same thing 600 videos thank you very much for everyone okay so we're going to find out where this abydos carvings come into play now people say that these are from someone that went into the future and saw our helicopters but let's be honest uh, they would have had to have come pr pretty much in the last hundred years because in another 20 or 30 years we won't have helicopters so that's pretty precise for us to to, to know that but they didn't because we can tell exactly what this is from ancient texts now we have to believe the ancient texts because they were found in 1800s and they have a fully fledged language which uh, linguistics agree that that was the first language and then we had babylonian and uh, aramaic etc that followed on from that so this was the first language so we have to agree that these these ancient texts are real and tell us everything that we need to know now if you go to the ancient texts the one particular passage says Enkin and Lil descended in helicopters and the actual abbreviation or the actual translation is whirlwinds now the helicopters um are described in the ancient texts as 
having a sort of a propeller type thing and it's a single seater craft so we can now safely say that that is an Anunnaki now that makes sense because the Anunnaki were around and flying around and we know all that because of the ancient texts during the time of the Egyptians in fact uh, Murduk became Ra so we know all of this so that now rules out the time travel it's basically someone's carved whether they had permission or not but someone carved one of the flying devices now we've got these other craft here now, this may not be all the craft that the Anunnaki had but these are the crafts that uh, we can see here so let's have a look at what crafts these so remember this one here let's have a look <coughs> now there it is and this is a recreation of it by Giorgio and they're putting it in a wind tunnel at the moment to test the aerodynamics of it and actually surprisingly it works so we can now rule that one out let's have, uh, look what else uh, the Anunnaki had they had these single seater rocket little per powered ships um, <clears throat> and let's have a look what else they had they also had this type of device uh, fly-in device so we can now say with some degree of certainty that the Abydos carvings are just recreations of what whoever saw the Anunnaki flying around in uh, watch the next video and I'll explain what Atlantis is and where they came from etc etc